Hey guys, welcome to the first Summer Circuit Tournament the uh, on One Nation of Gamers, sponsored by Geico, and it is going to be a lot of fun here. Uh, we got some crazy rules for you guys. We got a bunch of bunch of really well known players going to try their best to uh, uh, make decks out of these crazy rules and do their best against their opponents. Here, uh, I'm I'm Crip, joined here by Chucky. We're going to talk you guys through all the craziness that you guys are going to see over the next two days in this tournament. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Uh, I really enjoy these kind of tournaments. They've kind of been the the craze lately. Ever since Challenge Stone, but yep. uh, the the new formats definitely get you thinking. Uh, it's not as kind of mundane as some people think. the The standard format gets after a while, so should be pretty fun. Should be pretty fun. Um, there's there's a lot of things we gotta go over uh, for you guys to really understand what these players will be playing. Uh, but let's do we have uh, do we have like a bracket? Maybe we can introduce some of the players here. We'll see who we can expect to uh, to play. Uh, today and tomorrow. Okay, here we go. So we have uh, Saviz playing versus Trump, Forsen playing versus Ratsma, Dog versus Kibler, and Firebat versus Life Coach. You have a favorite in this, Chucky? Uh, I'm going to go with Kibler. I mean, he's oh, kind of yeah. won the first challenge stone. I was the one that lost to him. I mean, he's got some experience under his belt. I trust him. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're playing for uh, quite a bit of money. First place is going to take home two thousand bucks. Second place, one thousand bucks, and third and fourth, five hundred. Um, we're going to kick it off with Saviz versus Trump, but uh, we got we got to go over the rules here. And the rules are pretty interesting. They take they take a little bit of time to really absorb, and um, there's there's a lot of like consequences from that that uh, the player is going to have to deal with, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very interesting to see into. So uh, the rules. Uh, it's it stemmed from 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on insurance. That's the Geico Geico slogan there. So, what what do we what do we come up with? All cards must contain at least two instances of the factors of 15, and this includes uh, mana cost, attack, HP, durability if it's a weapon or text on a card. For instance, like Violet Teacher spawns 1-1. One, one. The 1-1 one, one that it spawns is one instance of the text, and on the card itself, the 3 is a factor, the 5 is a factor. So that's got 3, and each card to qualify needs 2 of these uh, factors of 15 on the card. And the interesting thing about it is that it's not, it's not too intuitive. Like, um, you know, when, when you saw this for the first time, Chucky, like, what, what, did, did anything really come to your mind, like, instantly? The first thing that kind of came to my mind was most spells couldn't be played, and then the second thing was kind of shaman spells can be played. Like, mostly because of the overload text, but also, you know, they tend to have the number one in their spells a lot, so. Yeah, they do, they do. Certain classes uh, definitely come out ahead of others. Uh, we talked about uh, that a little bit uh, before we got started here, so we'll, we'll give you guys our thoughts as the tournament rolls out. But uh, just to go into some of the details to clean this up a little bit, it'll start making sense once we see some of the cards. Once we start talking about it a little bit more, but we don't want to. We want to get into the games as soon as possible. So, in addition to these rules, uh, rule number two is your deck must also include Nazdormu. because uh, you know we we got places to be, and uh, Nazdormu is going to make that happen. And there are penalties um, if the players who made the decks um, have uh, cards that are illegal. Uh, they'll be replaced in the order of two Magma Ragers, two Wisps, two Grimscale Oracles, two Angry Chickens. So basically, the, uh, the One Nation of Gamers is completely merciless towards its participants. I'd, I'd say so, at least. It seems like uh, if, if you make a, a little bit of a slip-up, having a Magma Rager in your deck might be pretty catastrophic. Yeah, not not so forgiving of rules. You know, we'll see some... Hopefully, hopefully Savit's made his decks right this time. Uh, oh, he did not have the greatest go of it. It's a lot harder to do it in this case, in my opinion. Uh, the players are actually given only 15 minutes to make three decks of three different classes which will, they would then have to play in Conquest format. So, you know, we were talking about how, like, some classes, maybe Shaman, 
Uh, maybe we'll actually be surprised. Maybe actually Shaman won't even be the strongest one. But uh, some classes seem, you know, really strong and all that. But it is Conquest, so it's going to have to be based on their weakest deck because while you might slaughter your opponent with your first two decks, your third deck might suck and might just completely get rolled, and then you won't actually win your match. So uh, that's that's kind of uh, an aspect that you have to keep in mind, and it's really hard to keep in mind when you only had 15 minutes to do all of this. Um, now I made I made the rules for Challenge Stone, and basically I would like test the challenge on myself and then double the time. That was like the rule of thumb, and it seemed to be pretty good. I hope, but 15 minutes to me just sounds like well, it's 15 really minutes. Really difficult. Could save you 15 percent or more. Oh, of course. Insurance. Yeah, of course. It makes sense. It makes sense in that way. Yeah, but uh, that 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 intimidates me, and I'm really curious to see how the players. Uh, you know, really utilize their time here. What do you think? Is 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 fifteen minutes like you're in like a frantic like mode to just get something uh, on there? Yeah. So like you have to initially come up with the three decks you're going with. Basically, I think mm -hmm. with fifteen minutes you have just a lot less room for error. Like you can't start building a deck and then realize like, oh wait, I can't play that card. Can't play that card. Okay, this class sucks. You can't really do that. Yeah, because it costs you a bunch of time, so you kind of have to visualize what's going to be best. I'd say get that done in about five minutes, and then you just got to make the decks like ASAP. You're probably going to miss out on some pretty good cards. Uh, event, you know, it's just bound to happen to everybody. That was kind of my thought process in the first challenge stone was, yeah, I missed mm -hmm. out on some stuff, but other people did too, probably. So, mm -hmm. well, we are going to see Sabiz versus Trump here. Um, I feel like. Uh, Maybe Trump, having played a lot more Arena and having played a lot more varied decks, probably has just maybe a bit better instincts when it comes to just scrambling and putting something down in terms of cards. So I kind of give him the edge just based on that loose assumption. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Actually, going back to your prediction, you thought Kibler might be really good. I think Kibler's success was that he knew uh, a few classes extremely well, but I don't know if those classes are really the ones to go for in this tournament. Yeah. So, first matchup is going to be Warlock versus Shaman. We thought this Shaman would be really strong. I think I saw a Whirling Zapomatic, which isn't allowed. So, <laughs> I don't know what we'll do about that. Oh, okay. But, I, I didn't see that. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Uh, looks like pretty mid rangey Zooey deck for Savits here. Oh, he's got two of them. Oof. Uh... <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, that's... Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so this is a hand for Trump. Okay. Two illegal cards. But anyway, uh, we'll just go with the match for now. We'll figure out what we're going to do about that later. Uh, Saviz seems really shocked, and he should be, because that shouldn't be happening. Looks like Saviz, yeah, notices those cards. <laughs> From what I can tell, all the cards in Saviz's hand and play are illegal, and one of them right. is very interesting, that's the Hobgoblin. While we were talking about some of the cards that might be really strong, you mentioned One Drops and Jonah are really strong, we didn't actually talk about the Hobgoblin. That might actually be a pretty dominant card in this type of game. Yeah, if you're playing a lot of One Drops, you're playing Haunted Creeper, you can play Echoing Ooze, I believe. Can you play Echoing Ooze? I, uh, maybe not. But, Echoing uh, Ooze, I don't believe so. Yeah, I guess you can't. So, you know, you get a little bit of synergy with it, not an insane amount. It might have been, like we talked about, 15 minutes is pretty limiting time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we are asking the ref to see what's going to happen about this yep. game. But for now, Savitz is just going to concede. So, I would expect maybe we'll get like a regame. Uh, maybe it's a default loss for Trump. That'd be unfortunate going from... Uh, well... Double no. net warper, top of the world to just oh. I don't think it should be. Um, yeah, it, sh it probably won't be. So. It prob like yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a tricky situation, so it might take a little bit of time to sort that out. But no worries, there's plenty of stuff to talk about. So. Also, just want to mention that the warriors on the overlay are should be warlocks. I think. Pretty sure about that. Uh, oh so yeah. They each have the same lineup, but they have warlock over warrior. That's right, that's right. 
Yeah, even though Warrior didn't seem too bad of a pick, um, on, on the topic of Warrior, uh, we are not seeing it right now, but uh, you guys are probably pretty familiar with the type of Warrior that involves uh, War Songs, Patrons, Frothings, Whirlwinds, and Stable Ghoul, and all those cards are legal while they don't have Death Spites and that kind of stuff. Uh, board clears in general are just, you know, very, very difficult to really stick in your deck. Um, we're talking about Explosive Sheep seems to be the only one that you can really rely oh, on. There it is. There's the Magma Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. Okay. So we're going to see both of them this game. And they're not going to do we? too much. Yeah, you might just want to totem instead. Yeah. I have a feeling uh, two Orlings Zapmatics would be slightly better this game. Just a little bit. Yeah. But uh, that's why they're not allowed in this format. You know, they'd push Shaman over the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shaman gets to keep uh, basically any card with overload. They get to keep uh, Unbound because it's three mana and gets plus one, plus one. Three and one are factors of 15. And well, you're going to run a lot of overload cards because you can, because they're good. And some of those include, well, Earth Elemental. And when nobody can play Removal or Silence or Big Game, cards like Earth Elemental tend to be pretty good. Uh, the only class that seems to be able to remove them is, well, Shaman. They have Hex. Yeah. And Fire Elemental. And Fire Guard Destroyer. And Earthshock. You know, and all. Oh. Yeah. So we have some errors from both sides. Uh, the Wisp was... Wait, I guess... The Wisp is fine. It's 1-1. He could have put it in his deck for the Hobgoblin. That might be a real card. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. I think it's a real card. Well, if it real card or not, it's gonna be pretty fine when you have Hobgoblin in your deck. Yeah. So, wonder why yeah, he, he needs at least one juggle here. It doesn't really matter if he gets two because he's probably losing his creature to the weapon. What do you think about trading it into the other one to try and go for the double juggle? You get a higher percent on your first juggle. Hmm. So that was kind of interesting, but. Big Harvest Golem. Yeah, Harvest Golem is legal. Uh, yeah. it's, it's three mana, three toughness, and it spawns a 2-1. So you got, you got three instances. Two's the magic number here. It's pretty tricky to remove that Harvest Golem, but uh, do you really need to? Yeah, you're, you're probably just going to hit face here. Like, uh, I'm not sure why you would really think about it, but you trade in that Harvest Golem... You're in pretty bad shape. Yeah. I guess he's he's considering Lightning Storm is what he's considering. Yeah, talking about how Lightning Storm is not really... Uh, uh, I mean, how classes just don't really have access to their board clears, but Shaman, again, does with Lightning Storm. Yep. One of the few classes with a way to remove you know, this big of a board. Fortunately for Savits, there is no Lightning Storm in Trump's hand. In fact... There's two Magma Rangers. Not quite. Yeah. <laughs> the Magma Ranger dies to, like, I don't know what you'd call that, a quarter of a Haunted Creeper? Yeah, the uh, the totem is actually just as effective here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there it is! Oh, Goblin. Uh, hmm. I wonder like, if he wants to play it this turn, though. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could Void Terror the Haunted Creeper to get, like, more fun stuff on the board. Yeah. You but get at the to, same uh, time... Mm. Get to buff an Acolyte next turn, and if you play the Hobgoblin now, it's going to die. Oh, no, he's going to play the, the Acolyte, probably, right? Or do you want to do that oh, with no, the Hobgoblin? No, 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 you don't want to save it, yeah. So it's Void Terror, yeah. No, but Void Terror just dies. I don't like Void Terror. That's what, yeah, I think Acolyte's okay. He's gonna eat both. Ooh. That's gonna hurt him. I feel like Trump might actually win this game. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, It's definitely possible. I mean, Chalman's pretty powerful. He gets to fire Ellie this turn. But, I mean, Hobgoblin's pretty good here. Yeah, Hobgoblin is pretty good. It's gonna be a 6 7 for 3. If, you, if we uh, don't count the fact that you're playing Wisp in your deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's going to draw some cards. Yeah, it's going to be... 
it's going to be pretty damn good for sure, but it's just the individual card quality in a Shaman deck is so much higher. It, it really doesn't even matter that you have two Magma Ragers in your opening hand, I think. Uh, like, I think I think uh, Savitz is fine here. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is he's going to make the, the big Acolyte and the Hobgoblin. Well, I guess Trump can, can clear off the Acolyte and then Rockbiter off the, the Hobgoblin. So yeah. it's not terrible for either player. Still a pretty close game. Can't really tell who's going to win. I would say the Shaman deck has higher quality of draws. Mm -hmm. uh, unless like a second Hobgoblin comes off. Oh, Defender of Argus. That's one of those powerful cards. Yep. There are very few four drops that you can play in this format. Uh, Shredder, Yeti, both banned. So you kind of have to uh, pick something different. And Argus is one of those things that, especially in a zoo mm -hmm. deck, is still really powerful. Or play Shaman. Fire Guard or, or play Shaman, yeah. 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 Okay. We got the Rock Biter for the Hobgoblin. We got the Fire Elemental for the uh, Acolyte, as you mentioned. Um, okay. I think you just play everything but a second Magma Rager here. And you just hope your next draw is good. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, Savitsa's hand's really good, too. Oh, wow. Healing Totem's pretty nice here. Mm hmm. Plays around Defender of Argus. Ooh. So Mortal Coil is one of the few spells Warlock actually can still play. Yeah, we were talking about that, how uh, most classes just have no spells. I thought Warlock was that, uh, but yeah, Mortal Coil is legal. Um, Demon Heart is legal, I believe. Yeah. And I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like, Demon Heart is okay, I think. I'm not yeah. sure it's in this deck, but... If you, if you, like, demon hard up your guy and trade into their huge guy, there's not many spells in the format to punish you. Like, if, if they have a right. Fell Reaver out and you buff your guy to, like, a 9-9 nine, nine and then trade it in and make it a 9-1, like, there's not many incidental one damage spells in this format that can punish you. Mm -hmm. So, still pretty good stuff. Wow, Magma Rager gets value. Yeah, man. Well, now if you're, if you're Savitz... Oh, that draw! Oh. Wow! Oh, that wow. draw! Wow! <laughs> okay. Well, if you're Savitz, I think you just win now. So. Yeah, he's just playing the wisp too. I think just forget it. Like it's so hard to lose from that turn. Yeah. Shaman runs out of stuff. Life tap came in pretty big this game. So. Uh, even with I think, even with a storm. I think you have to save the storm. You'd save it here and just go for the... I'd go for the taunt. The huge roll next turn. It's just you can't really win. Yeah. Like, if you use it here, you can't win, so... True. And there goes Lotheb. So you're yep. still not dead. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're uh, dead. Yeah, he, he's dead because he can't kill off the Lotheb. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there he goes. Magma Rager. Not so good. Unfortunately yeah. for Trump, those mistakes really, really punished him, as uh, they and, probably would all the other players. And he still has to win with that deck. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be rough waters ahead. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, Savitz also has Shaman, which is uh, really good, and he also has Paladin. Um, Paladin is, is pretty good. Uh, you were mentioning how uh, Muster Quartermaster is available. Uh, Alder Peacekeeper is available, but also Humility. And Humility might seem like... Uh, you know, something you wouldn't want to put in your deck, but I, I think it's okay. I mean, it depends on which way you go. You want it to go, like, more aggressive if you pick Paladin. I thought it'd go a bit more control. Um, yeah, cards like Tyrion, I feel, are are pretty good. Yeah, the only thing Paladin really lacks in this format is their uh, four-drop slot and shielded minibot. Those are the kind of things you're missing. Mm -hmm. But you can still play Defender of Argus, which goes quite well with Muster for Battle if you can lock down the early game. Uh, you can still play Juggler Muster, you can still play Quartermaster, almost all the five drops are still legal, play Double Cog Hammer, and you can also play Tyrion, because Ashbringer is a 5-3 weapon, and it's mentioned yep. in the card text. Yep. 
So uh, we'll, we'll have to see how these uh, how these swing. Um, I feel though that in general players would most most likely be playing aggressive decks because they're just easier to build. And there's our first Nazdormu sighting. And there's Bolvar. Bolvar was actually one of those huge swing cards um, in uh, in the opening Challenge Stone tournament. Actually, that that Kibler did very well with. Uh, so that that should be pretty interesting. MC yeah. Tech, that's another powerful anti-Zoo card. When you don't really have board clears, sometimes that's good enough. Yeah, not only is... Uh, one of the interesting things about these kind of formats is you don't just want to think about your deck, you want to think about other players' decks and like what they're building, what they're not allowed to use, what they can use. And so one of the things that he identified was a lot of people would be playing similar strategies where you build a big board, and without consecration or any like area clears to help that out, kind of have to put in something like Mind Control tech. Mm -hmm. So Viz gets the bottom end of that 50-50 to kill the creature for free. He has to drop his uh, Abusive Sergeant, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, here it comes. Take the, take the Juggler. Uh, if he yeah. takes the Juggler because the Battle Cry triggers first, he gets a Juggle for the MC tech. Yeah, that would have been pretty nuts. But there's that Defender of Argus I was talking about. Probably one of the only four drops... That you'd want in your Paladin deck, maybe send in Shield Master. Yeah, we've seen both of those in uh, Saviz's uh, Zoo deck already. Uh, no point to play around Consecrate because yeah. players can't use it. I think one of the most interesting things about this format is that since there's so little spells, you basically can just go face all the time. You know, mm -hmm. There's very few things that can punish you. I guess he was playing around maybe a Defender of Argus. Uh, other than that, nothing really, no real benefit to keeping a minion on board for Trump. Is Azure Drake legal? Oh, Coghammer. Coghammer would have been really good there. Yeah. Azure Drake is not legal, I guess, I would think. Because it's, I think... No, no, it has spell power plus one. Oh, spell power so plus one. So it is one. legal. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right. It's five mana spell power plus one. Uh, I was thinking about the, the card draw. It says a card, not one card, right? Yeah. Well, there's Bulvar. It's going to so take a now. lot to swing this game, though, yeah. We can kind of see Trump chose for more of the slow route with the two Acolytes, the Healbot, whereas Svitz might have gone for a faster version of the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, he's definitely the aggressor in this match. And Dragon Consort, you can accelerate out your non store move that you are required to play. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's true. That's true. Yep. There's no big game hunter to punish it. If he top decks that next turn, yeah, critical. The, the, the funniest um, thing is, like, the the thing you least expect on turn seven is Nazdormu, right? <laughs> yeah, you just slam that, hit the end turn button. They weren't expecting it. Yep. So, yeah, I think what, what Savitz is playing around to is just, like, stuff like Coghammer. Mm-hmm. And well, on six mana, you can play a creature and cog hammer, so it's, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I think at this stage of the game, maybe next turn he'll just go all out face. Yeah, I would have liked him to go face because he actually has 14 damage right now. Mm -hmm. So if he went face with that two damage, he could set up lethal. Uh, but he is one off as it stands. Oh, now he's three off. Four off. <laughs> Pretty good juggles. Yeah, him. that was quite Ooh, he exceptional. he forgot to attack. Uh, Did he? Oh, oh, there's a taunt up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rank 25 casters. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, I don't think there's any way... Uh, no, not even... Like, last last turn, if his creatures didn't die to juggles, he still had a chance to lethal with his own juggles. Yeah. But now there's no chance, because he, he lost quite a bit of board to the, the juggles of Trump. Yeah, but luckily, I mean, there's not much comeback potential uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the Paladin Mirror. There's no Consecration, there's no Equality. Oh, there's there's court, Quartermaster, though, and if you don't clear those dudes... Uh, 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 his juggles took care of that for him. Yeah. They didn't want him to, to screw up. And yeah, now there's really no comeback. Yeah, I think if you're Savitsu, you basically look at this and you think, if I have five on board versus nothing, how do I lose? Like, okay, he right. mind control text one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, you still win. <laughs> so it's going to be a quick 2-0 lead for Savitz. Yeah, 
So these is uh, cleaning up. Uh, not with Shaman, though. No, that was a Paladin win, I think. Yeah. So Shaman, which we projected as probably the best deck. Maybe it's not the absolute best, but I think it it is tied for the most represented class. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five out of eight of them, and yeah. it's, it's pretty strong. You can use like all those really powerful cards, but it still constitutes a fairly slow deck usually. And from what I've seen is that I think, uh, at least I have significantly underestimated uh, the aggression in this type of format. Yeah. It's, it's very, you know, facey. Like, you take control of board, and there's not any great ways to really bring it back. I mean, Shaman is strong because it actually has a way to bring back the board. You can play spells, essentially. Mm -hmm. but, All right. I mean, it's basically just going to be a bunch of small minions fighting for the board and not many things to play around. Okay, well, um, I guess it's just juggle time. Juggle the next turn, juggle abusive. Yep. So, I mean, Savitz is basically the weapon kind of helps you to fight back for board. Uh, one of the few cards that can really generate value in this format, since you can't really have many two-for-one cards. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, Trump's basically just the aggressor here. He's trying to hit face. And... Mm, this is a draw a mech, which is Yeah, this important. is a bit of a tough turn. But does it really matter to save no. your, uh, your thing for the Fell Reaver next turn? No, you should still just make the play. Defender of Argus and, and trade really greedy. Yeah. Uh, again, no spells to really punish you for you know leaving up a 2-1 with Taunt against your opponent's 3-2. There's no, you know, there's no silence really in this format. Owl, you can't play. Spellbreaker, you can't play. So I oh, wow. think the shaman's gonna come back on board. Okay, I thought actually he'd suicide his creeper and then Argus the two one ones. Nah, I like this because I mean, now what's the flame imp gonna do? Mm-hmm. I guess it's a little more vulnerable to mortal coil again or a juggle. Yeah. But yeah, still, he that's needs fairly to hit that low. juggle. He needs two juggles, actually, I believe. I think you, he needs to play the juggler, yeah. abusive nothing, hope it kills the 2 1, and then abusive again and hope it kills a 1 1. Well, you abusive the 3 2 and then go face for 7. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think I would have maximized my chances because you put your opponent to 12, you put four things on board, and then you have a Doom Guard to follow it up. Like, you, you can kind of still win from that spot. Probably mm -hmm. not with a rusty horn in Savita's hand, but you can't play around that. Yeah, that Fell Reaver, Rusty Horn, but uh, it looks like Trump is playing a lot of early game, so maybe he can uh, get rid of Savitz's deck and uh, just stall <laughs> out. That, that is possible. Like, um, yeah. Usually the Fell Reaver doesn't have much of an effect in the game, but um, in some cases, just stalling out and requiring your opponent to clear the board uh, Well, I fine. think the main issue is he also has to kill the 8-8 eventually. Like, I've, I've seen games where the Fell Reaver gets kind of, you know, you draw their whole deck, but you can't kill the 8-8. But he, he actually can kill the 8-8, just mm -hmm. the Mortal Coil draw. And we'll get to see a lot of the cards in here, which is really good for Trump. Yeah, maybe he can spot an illegal card and get a regame. <laughs> lightning Storm, Lightning Storm. Ooh, you know what not to play around now. Yep. So he burned 12. Oh no, Nazdormu. Rip Nazdormu. <laughs> oh, Earthshock's a great card to draw. Yeah. Okay. Trump kind of uh, doing pretty well here. Saviz is, is doing alright, but he's, he's really running low on steam here. Yeah, I think... I think it's going to be a pretty big issue here for Trump. Yeah, I mean, the double Doom Guards... Not helping him out too much. He just has to go face, but Rusty Horn's gonna stop that. Even Hex. <laughs> that that has to be one of the best things he could have drawn. There's only one left in there. Yeah. I might have even saved the Hex and just Rusty Horn and made him trade into the Creeper. 
What can really be a better hex target, maybe besides Nosdormu, I guess? Uh, I don't know. There, there's probably something. Mm -hmm. Fell Reaver. Yeah. Yeah. Trump even put zombie chows in. Really, really going along with the board control theme, but mm -hmm. of course, doesn't help much this late in the game. I like this play. I like trying to go for some juggles. Yeah, I mean, you you know there's no AoE from Warlocks in this format. They can't run any of their clear cards. Well, that's a pretty mean board, and I don't believe Warlock has anything that can deal with a board besides Explosive Sheep. <laughs> explosive Sheep, Mortal Coil? I think he's already used two cards. Yeah, he already used both, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh... Is this lethal? It's one off. Yeah. yeah, it is one off, so not quite yet. Well, no. If you suicide a one-one in Sylvanas, you can get a spell, spell power totem, and then juggle face, and that would be lethal. <laughs> so twenty-five percent lethal. Okay, that's not too uh, bad. Wait, wait, wait. If you if you double juggled, would it be higher? Probably not. Yeah, it wouldn't be. So, no taunt for Trump. Even with the taunt, the lightning bolt would end it. So, 3-0 from Savitz. With yeah. the same decks, basically. Yeah, basically. And, um, really, you gotta feel for Trump a little bit here. I mean, he started off the, the game with Shaman with, like, the dream mech start. And he was like, oh my god, this is so awesome! Easiest tournament of my life! Yeah, and then the referee probably tells him, uh, yeah, those two whirlwind uh, creatures that you just played that are basically going to win the game next turn? No. Magma Ragers. And then it was uh, a crushing downhill straight from there. Yep. So, we will be going to a break shortly. While we're gone, guys, you can go to geico.onog.gg and enter a raffle for your chance to win an official TSM PC. And we will be back shortly with a winner's interview. Oh. <laughs> okay. I win! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have the uh, the boxes mixed up a little bit here, but we do have Saviz. That's the important thing. One thing we don't have is his ability to hear us, but we will circumvent this a little bit. I will I will type the questions that Chalky will ask him. So I'll be the transcriber here, and uh, we, we we will we will get some uh, some insight on what went down in that series of games against Trump. So uh, what, what do you got for Saviz, Chalky or Crip? Hey guys, Kaparian here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I mean, you just won 3-0, pretty easy. How do you feel about the match, and just about the format in general? Now we have to have Crip, the transcriber. Okay, I actually can't hear anything, but um, reading from the chat. Um, the match match was uh, was an interesting one. The way that it started with, uh, with, <laughs> with those double zap -matics. I instantly just checked my Skype. Uh, is it legal? Like, did I get the rules wrong, or did he? And um, yeah, then we remade the game. Um, it was like the entire set was was quite uh, quite one-sided in the end. But I don't think my decks are as good as I hoped, and I think I'm missing a lot of stuff. Yeah, did the 15-minute uh, kind of time limit did that really hurt you? Like, how did you go about using the 15 minutes? Yeah, the the fifteen minute time limit was actually really bad for me, especially the 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 paladin deck. I only had like two minutes left when I scrapped that one up, and uh, seemed good. And I, even on the other decks, because I kept going back to the other decks for for more cards, and then like the last deck uh, got a little bit less attention. Like you see, some of those dragon thingies, like there might not be enough dra dragons th there, or there might be. And also, there's something else missing. I can't say what it is, but it's kind of important stuff. Um, yeah, but not enough was shown from the deck, so I can't reveal what's, what else is missing. Okay. Well, I, I thought your class choices were pretty good. The decks didn't seem too bad, so 
Uh, how do you feel about your next opponent? It's going to be either Forsen or Ratsma. How do I feel about my next opponent, Ratsma or Forsen? Um, yeah, I think I think I'll do fine. Like I mentioned, at least not just the Paladin, but the Shaman is also missing something kind of important. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm feeling a bit shaky, but I think I got the like the the main lines kind of. Right, and I, I think that my decks are fairly solid, so my chance should be good. I'll be definitely l looking carefully uh, on the next match and just like a, kind of like scouting my opponents to know what what's in there, because I think information is uh, quite valuable in this. Yeah, well, uh, great job on your first match, and best of luck in your next. Uh, if you have any closing words or shoutouts, other than that, we'll see you in the semifinal. All right, thanks. Let's hope that um, I can go far. Well, it was a nice opportunity to get here to replace Eloise, and I, I'm uh, planning to take uh, advantage of that, this, uh, this thing. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was, that was a little bit awkward, but I mean... <laughs> Basically, we nailed it because he can't he can't hear us at all. So I mean, we we made the best out of a bad situation. Oh man, can't wait for the uh, Twitch chat spam about this. Yep, uh, we're gonna go to a, a quick break to uh, get reorganized and uh, yeah, get ready for uh, our upcoming match, which I believe will be it'll be Forsen versus uh, Ratsma. It'll we'll basically find out who Saviz will be facing off against tomorrow. So stay tuned. We'll be back shortly.